80,000. Tell Connor to relax, you know, worry about the fight tomorrow, and we'll worry about how many seats we can sell in Ireland. Do you think he can? Um, yeah, I th I, you know, if, if that kid, how about if he's fighting for a title? Mm -hmm. Probably. Can, you know. Could you describe why it felt so electric in there tonight? God, these uh, I, I, the Irish man, they, they they go crazy. It's they're loud, they're loud, it's fun. Is that was a good time. I'm gonna say, is there any danger at all though? Like the expectation level that Connor has brought on himself and that the people have. It's like if this isn't the greatest fight of all time, it's almost a letdown in some way. It's impossible for it not to be. You know the way these two are fired up. Diego's in great shape. You know this is an important fight for both guys. Obviously, this is, this is a, a really big test for Connor. He's been off. Uh, you know, for over a year, and now he's fighting Diego. Diego's no joke. You know, Diego. The one thing that everybody has to remember: Diego went through some personal problems. You know, last year. I think this Conor McGregor fight woke him up, and uh, Conor talking trash and him talking trash back has really uh, set a fire under this kid's ass. Yeah, it looked like in the best shape that in great shape. Seen him. Yeah. What? And he he obviously pulled you aside and said something to you that before Connor came out. He said, if that motherfucker comes near me, I'm going to headbutt him in the yeah. face. <laughs> Were you concerned that it was going to boil over there? Cause he was just yeah, I said, Tru I promise he won't come near you. I'll make sure <laughs> I'll take the headbutt in the face before I let <laughs> that happen. Uh, yeah, I wasn't going to let that happen. I knew that these two, they were talking smack behind the curtain, and then this is where we did the fighter meeting, and I guess it, they started up in here, too, before I got here, so... Yeah, they, those two are ready to go. But yeah, they're, the, the, it's not that the expectation, you know, that this <coughs> better be the greatest fight ever. I mean, there's no, I, this is exactly how I think the first round is going to go down. I think there's going to be no feeling out process. I think these two are going to run right out and, and just start dropping bombs on each other. And uh, whoever can make it out of the first round into the second round without getting knocked out or, or whatever happens, uh, you know, you're talking. They're both going to have that crazy adrenaline dump, nervous energy, and all the other thing that's going to go along with this massive main event in this place where it is the loudest place I've ever heard in, in, in my career. I think it, you know, there's so many factors going into this fight tomorrow, and Diego has a lot more experience in these type of things. The kid <clears throat> was on the Ultimate Fighter. Let me tell you what, I don't care what anybody says about the Ultimate Fighter, it's the hardest thing to go through. He went through that, he won it, you know, he's been through some personal problems, and it looks like he's his mind's in the right place, and he's back in shape. So this is a real test for Conor McGregor. I thought the other cool thing was that it's not just like a one-person card for the Irish fans. I mean, they were supporting everybody. Oh, yeah. So does that get you excited about this market and feeling that it's not going to be five years before we're back? And it's not just if Conor McGregor wins that we'll yeah. come back. I mean, well, people like were asking me that today in the, in the uh, you know, what, what what's what happens to this market without Conor McGregor? I said. We were here last time without Conor. Conor McGregor, McGregor was a fan in the stands last time we were here, and it was crazy, you know. Um, so, yeah. Are you back though because of him? Are you back now because of his popularity? Well, we were we were gonna come back here, no matter what, whether Conor McGregor surfaced or didn't surface. But it definitely doesn't suck to have Conor McGregor, uh, you know, as popular as he is. Do you think this show could have sold out the way it did with just one fight on the card, just him? Be that popular? I, you know, last time we came here and sold out with, you know, the guys were, were ready to see UFC last time we were here. The Conor McGregor thing just makes it that much. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what's different. I'll tell you what the what the what the Conor McGregor factor brings. We're on we're on open TV here tomorrow, free TV. You know, uh, this country is one of the top in supporting their guys when they when they you know when they do something and. Uh, this thing, has, this thing reaches everybody in this country. This channel we're on, it's like 99.9% .9 of the country has this channel and can watch it. Have you noticed a spike in Fight Pass subscriptions leading up to this show? Yeah, Fight Pass is going to do very well. Have you, it will. It will in Japan too. The Japan fight will right. do very but have, well. Is there a direct correlation between this show coming Absolutely. up? Absolutely. These these fights that are these next fights that are coming are going to be huge for Fight Pass. You you like obviously. Yeah, people. I don't know if you noticed the, the shift in how people feel about Fight Pass now. Had a lot of negative, uh, you know, responses in the beginning, you know, in the U.S. But the rest of the world, it was doing great. But now it's it's all turned, and you know, Fight Pass keeps getting better and better, and it will continue to get better. And these type of fights are the type of fights you don't want to mess.
you, you've been a big Connor supporter, obviously, from the get-go, from the start with USC. What was it about him that you identified with right away that you said that you kind of got behind him right away? There's some people you meet, like a Connor McGregor or Ronda Rousey. Um, you know, I was so against women's MMA. And uh, I, I sat down in a room with Ronda Rousey, and the first 15 minutes I was talking to myself in my head. I was like, holy shit, I think I'm going to do this. Holy shit, I, I, I think this girl's the, you know. And obviously the rest is history. She wins an ESPY, you know. Uh, and not just an ESPY for fighting, the best female athletes. Like if it was the Oscars, it's the best female actor and best male actor. She won that ESPY, you know. Um, and then Conor McGregor, <laughs> you know, uh, I, 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 I can't remember what time I was here. And everybody kept ta telling me about this kid, Conor McGregor, Conor McGregor. And for some reason, I thought he was a heavyweight. And uh, I, uh, you know, all you got to do is meet the kid first 15 minutes. And, like, you just got that it factor, that thing that, that uh, you don't have to be Irish to like Conor McGregor. And Danny, you mentioned women's mixed martial arts star. Uh, on, on the update, you saw any Gina Carano? Uh, next week. She's going to be signed? Next week, I have a meeting with her on Monday. How confident are you that you're going to sign her? I'm pretty confident. Dana, 15 months ago, you were in Ireland um, honored by Trinity College. When you were over here that time and you saw the support for yourself and the support for Fran, did that help solidify your decision to come back to Ireland as soon as possible? We were already coming back. I mean, that blew me away how many people showed up over there uh, for that thing. That was insane. I, I, I didn't expect that at all. But yeah, it was, it was awesome. I had a blast. And if I could just uh, build on that and say, you spoke previously about uh, having the card not being reliant on Conor McGregor, and we see that with five fighters from this island uh, on the card. If you're to return to Ireland, will there be, can we expect similar numbers on the card? Well, yeah, that's 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 sort of what, what our uh, plan has been as we go into these other countries now, is building this, this, this local talent. Um, whether we're in China, whether we're here, whether we're in uh, England, or anywhere else, you know, we're, we're looking to, to build. I think our last trip here, you know, just like everywhere else we've gone, started this explosion where there's all this talent that's starting to, to, to pop up over here. Wait till we leave this time, you know, when, when almost 100% of, of, of this country can watch this thing on free TV, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a, be a big deal. Don't worry, the next wave is already banging on the door, ready to hit in. Yeah, no, Dana, I'm ready. You, you have Irish ancestry. <coughs> I do. What is that? What's that? My grandmother, um, my grandmother's actually moved to uh, the U.S. when she was five or six years old, and uh, her name is Maddie O'Neill, <laughs> and uh, she just passed away recently. She was 93 years old. But yeah, she was from here. Do you know what part? Who's going to ask us that? It was either Cork or uh, I, I can't remember. I think Cork. Yeah, you don't make them say screw that. Who's going to ask about your ancestry? Is uh, is it a little bit frustrating for Lorenzo and Frank that here you are bringing another car to Dublin, yet they haven't cracked Italy? The yet. Irish, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it's the best, man. Yeah, oh yeah, it's a bummer for them. Why have you never been to Switzerland? Huh? Why have you never been to Switzerland? <laughs> we have a joke. Me and the Petitas always joke about Irish and Italian. Ethnic jokes fly back and forth. I won't say it here. I'll <laughs> start some shit. But uh, yeah, they, they want to do Italy bad. Given the reception in there, would it be five years before you're back again? No. I, well, we had this type of reception last time, too. Everybody forgets. This, that last event here was crazy. I, I think that's the last event that happened here is part of the reason this <coughs> event, has, the event itself has become like a, a big event. You know what I mean? The hype is different this time around, though. With oh, definitely. Yeah, the, I agree. The level. So, um, you know, what, what are your plans for Ireland? And for well, here's the difference, too. The difference is I was just... Uh, tweeting about the, the paper, the sun that, that, that had that pullout section in there. It's a big difference when you come back and you're highlighting the kid in the main event who's from here, you know, and, and has such a huge following and people, like I said, Ireland reminds me of Mexico in the way that it supports its, its people when they become, you know, when they're on their way and they start to become uh, uh, popular or doing great things in, in a sport. It's very much like Mexico, man, like the whole country gets behind them and that, that's the difference with Connor, and like I said, in the paper and everything, and talk, everybody can talk about a specific kid who, who's from here. And how's your experience been rolling up to kind of pre-fight activity, the open training that today has been positive? And has everything been has been amazing, man. The buzz here has been incredible. <coughs> um, it, it's all been good. Uh, 
Last time I was here in Trinity, I, I, I was dealing with Meniere's, <clears throat> and I promised the people that showed up there that I was going to take them out for a drink. So tonight I'm actually going to go do it. I have a pretty good feeling I'm going to get fucking hurt tonight. Um, should, should we tell everybody where they're going to be? Yeah, well, I haven't decided yet. We're strategic. Every, every pub in town wants me to go there. So I'm trying to figure out where I'm going to do it and uh, try not to get killed tonight. It has to be a pub crawl then, doesn't it? Huh? It has to be a pub crawl then. <laughs> it's going to be interesting. A while back then, you were talking about all the time. It was actually Gary talking about you couldn't do a matchmaker. About what? Yeah. Um, is that still on the table? Is that still on the cards? You know, no. We, we did talk about that for a while, but you know, the guys we got right now, I'm, I'm gonna stick with them doing doing the matchmaking. Dana, you've talked for a long time about you go to a market for the first time and then it kind of spreads like a virus. This, to me, feels like the first example of that because you have guys who were fans five years ago. There's enough. Nah, the, the UK is a great example too. But who, the, where we when, saw when guys the, who were fans. The first time I went to the UK, right. I went looking for a place for martial arts. They had like one place, and uh, there, there was like a couple of guys. Australia is another place. You know, there, there were two guys that actually fought in the whole country of Australia, and now look at the difference. You know, um, in, in Canada too. Canada is one of those places, but you know Ireland. It, it, it just seems so much more. But you got to remember when we went to England. You know, our, our first time that we went to um, um, oh, oh, Manchester. Oh, yeah. I mean, that was insane. The Manchester fight when we went there, and Bisping came out, and the place was crazy. Um, you know, it's just it just feels this way now because it's been so long since we've had a market that that you go into and you got you know a guy like Connor. Bisbing was that guy up in Manchester, and um, so you know we, it's 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 happened here in Ireland just like it's happened in all the other countries that we've gone to. Connor says that he has a vision he'll be a <coughs> champion before the end of the year. Is there any chance that that actually happens that if he wins this fight? It, it would have to be his next fight, you know. Geez. Yeah. So no. But, you know, I I understand. You know, I, I love this kid. I love his attitude. I love the way he he thinks. I love. Uh, how much of a real fighter this kid is, and I, all, all the things that make Conor McGregor Conor McGregor, I love. Um, but I'm not going to rush him into, into into something. He needs to. This is a big test for him. You know, but let's let's be honest. <coughs> if if he goes in there tomorrow night and smokes uh, Diego Brandao with, with the shape he's in and everything else being Diego, that's impressive. Then then we then we give him another test in the top ten. Then you, then you move him up into possibly the top five if he looks impressive in that one. There, there's a way to do it. Would you keep him in Ireland? Would you keep like the next three, four fights in Ireland, or would you think that it's important to move him around? Yeah, it's important to move him around. Yeah. Dana, how's Tough 20 going? How's what? Tough 20. Tough 20 is going good. Yeah. Yeah. Last time we spoke in Berlin. I'm, I'm actually pissed that I got to miss the fight today. <laughs> the fight today is a really good fight. Oh. I'm bummed out that I'm missing it. Was it? Nah. <laughs> I'm bummed I'm missing it though. Last, last time we spoke in Berlin, I asked you about the format of the show in terms of will it be split up to teams and we weren't giving anything away there. Yeah. Any update? Or it's different. It's, it, there's teams, but it's totally different than anything we've ever done. How do you mean? Um, just we didn't do it the way that it's always been done. <laughs> You'll see. Right. Dana, Claudia Gadelia, obviously they're very impressive performance in the night with a strawweight uh, debut in the UFC. Um, you know, what's, what's her situation now? Is she going to have to wait to fight on the finale in December? Are you going to match her up against I don't know. one of the losers in the Yeah, house? she looked good the other night. Um, you know, her first fight in the UFC, you know, it's a, it's a lot of pressure. Um, I don't know. And yeah, she's probably got the best abs in the UFC, <laughs> <laughs> right? Who's got better abs than her? Nobody. Roy Nelson. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ab. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if, you sign, if you sign Gino next week, is, is your confident in I think so. Yeah. Would that be for maybe the New Year's card as far as how it would interfere? December, probably. Dana, any update on the status of Jose Aldo's injury? Um, is there any possibility that maybe uh, Chad Mendes could sponsor him in the uh, interim title fight? Aldo's injury was only going to ho hold him back 45 days. So we're going to put that fight in somewhere else. Dana, and just uh, when, when talking about title fights, there's a lot of speculation that the winner of Brad Diggity and McCall might be right in the cusp of the title shot. True. Again. How far away do you think uh, 
the winner in this fight. I don't know, but I got to see how everything lay, plays out on Saturday night, and then we'll go from there. So you can ask me the same question Saturday night. I was going to say, I mean, speaking about the flyweight division, obviously a lot of the, the, the title fight that was announced got kind of a whole home response from fans. Was there any talk Which at all about it, with Kerry Oslo awesome. stepping in? Well, and I think a lot of it was. I mean, look how great Lineker looked the other night. Obviously, right. you have a fantastic flyweight <laughs> fight this weekend. Was there any thought, you know, we could just wait seven days? You're going to make me say all this shit again. When people are ho hum, you know, look at the card the other night. I mean, you just never know what's going to happen. Lineker is, oh, God, that kid's a monster. You know, that, that, that division is, uh, is fun. It's exciting. There's a lot of tough guys in there. Well, so was there any thought to, like, hey, maybe we wait seven days, let, let that Lineker fight play out, let this, this big flyweight fight play out this weekend before we make this decision to put Kerry Osso in? No? Why did no. Demetrius have to come back so soon? Was there a reason for that? Did he ask to come back? He just fought. Yeah. When did he just fight? He fought yeah. in Vancouver. In June. Yeah. June. That's right. Yeah, no, I think we asked him to. Okay. You, yeah. So you wanted, you, and, he, and that's why... Kerry also was the best available guy. You wanted him to be on that card in particular? Yeah. Any particular reason why? Uh, to make the card stronger. Okay. Yeah. So, so just go back to the, the card for a second. Like, we all know the most of the books we've here to see Conor McGregor versus Brandel. What other point stands out for you? Say that again? What other point apart from the, the main event stands out? Yeah, obviously the co-main event with Conor Nelson. He's fun to watch. The kid is, uh, his stand-up is so unorthodox and yet so effective and you know and he's obviously a huge fan favorite too people love Gunnar Nelson um, and, and, and the Pickett McCall fight you know another great fight um, yeah well, Dana there's supposed to be a break in the news press conference this morning with Seth Stones can we get any sort of inkling into what that was about so it was breaking news on the phone this morning no there's supposed to be a break in the news press conference today but it was, uh, it was postponed I'll take that one there was, oh. there, was a, there was a European specific uh, announcement or announcement of our commercial partner. Uh, we've had to wait on uh, the announcement which should get to uh, get the paperwork to sign up on it straight away because they want to make sure. We'll, we'll be back with you now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. I know. What sort of time frame are we looking at? Uh, within the next 10 days. Okay, that's great. That's right. Have you had a chance to speak to Nate Diaz? Um, why do you think he's rebelling so much? Who? Nate Diaz. Nate? Yeah. Who knows? Do you, think, oh, sorry. Do you think maybe if you had a chance to sit down with him face to face, you can work things out? Probably not. Who's <laughs> difficult? <laughs> Probably not. Is it Nate? Oh, he's under contract. Yeah. You know? He's under contract. When he's ready to fight, he can fight. You know? The kid makes good money. The kid makes really good money. You know? And the unfortunate part is he's not a needle mover. His brother is a needle mover. He's not. Is any with uh, Nick? You know, N Nick is, uh, Nick's not holding out, Nick's not doing, Nick said, I'm, I'm just not going to fight for a while, I'm going to retire. And, and I think that when that's your mindset, you need to take some time off, you know? This isn't baseball or some sport where you can, you know, whatever. This, this is fighting, man. You got, you've got to be all in or all out. Is this one of the situations where maybe you and him can't work things out, but maybe Lorenzo can. Has Lorenzo reached out to him separately? To who? To Nate. Has Lorenzo tried to reach out to him to, to sort things out? Or no. No. This isn't a this isn't a sort things out thing. You're under contract. You just signed this contract. Yeah. It's just you know. Un he's unhappy for some reason. Who is happy? Who who's really at the end of the day? You know. At the end, of, when we signed Melendez, is when he got unhappy. When his partner got his contract. He became unhappy, you know. Do you like the idea of um, Nick Diaz coming back and potentially fighting Anderson Silva? Do you think that works? Whoever Nick, I mean, when Nick decides to come back, we'll talk about who he's going to fight. Then there's no sense in talking about matchups for for Nick until he's until he's back. Okay, what's, what's the? Uh, can you give us any insight on the holdup of announcing the venue for Jones Gustafson too? Like we know Vegas, but you'll, yeah, you'll know when we tell you. When we tell you, you'll get it. Yeah, it's, like it's tricky. Sorry, is that because Mayweather's fighting two weeks early? No. Nothing to do with no. It. <coughs> no. It's, be, it's been mentioned a lot about the five years since the UFC came back to Ireland, but it's been seven years since the UFC went back to Northern Ireland, Belfast. Is there any like, maybe plans to go back to Northern Ireland anytime soon? 
Yeah, I mean, you know, what, what we're finding now, and Jane has articulated it well, is that we used to ask cities if we'd come into the city, and now people are asking us to come, so that they're on the list, clearly. And after the success of this weekend so far, uh, they're clearly on the list, so that's why it's getting active. And it was part of your plan, Paul, to have these events, like Dublin, Northern Ireland, maybe Scotland, all set at the same date every year. How close are you to making that happen? Uh, ideally, that's what we'd like to do. Jane talks about it all the time, about consistency, to, uh, to, keep, to make sure that the fans can prepare and plan, that the networks can prepare and plan, the commercial parks, it's all part of the, it's all part of the business. And <coughs> just saying that on, on that point there, the, um, the response and the reaction to this market here in Dublin and in Ireland, the way the fans of tickets went, I think three minutes or something like that, does that have to make you, you know, rethink your strategy of, uh, you know, the, your EMEA events, you know, like scheduling, things like that? Yeah, you just wish they had bigger arenas. I mean, that, you know, that these guys created this monster, and, and it's catching fire <laughs> everywhere. So, you know, now, ironically, five years ago we were here. Uh, yesterday at the, uh, sorry, the Open Workout Conference, everybody's asking, when are we going to Croke Park? <laughs> <laughs> So that's, some, that's something you're seriously considering doing. Uh, does the, the sky's the limit? I said, these guys have got this, this I, I don't remember who was there at the press conference when I told you when we hired him. Mm. I said, watch what this guy does with Europe and look what he's done with Europe since he's been here. Yeah. The job that he's done is unbelievable and we knew he was the guy and, uh, and, and I'm telling you, there's, just, there's things that you guys don't even know, you know, the behind the scenes stuff that this, that this man has done. He's, he's unbelievable, and it's uh, it's one of the best hires we've ever had in, 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 in the what UFC. What are some of the factors that dictate exploring new markets? What are some of the factors that dictate Whether what? or not you go into a new market, or, or say, for <coughs> example, a country in Europe, they came to you, say on a governmental level, they came to you and said, we love the tourism aspect of this. Would you that consider helps. Coming here? That helps, yeah. yeah. It, it definitely helps when, 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 when the arena is excited about you coming, the, the city and country you're coming into is excited about you coming. Um, Sponsors in that market are excited about you coming. The networks are excited. You know, all that stuff really helps. Um, and I'll tell you what, what's interesting, and, and he can talk more about it, but this Dublin card has really kick-started Europe, and a lot of people in Europe, different European cities now, are very interested in the UFC because of this Dublin card, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Dana, there was a report uh, today that Cerrone's going to fight your Maga Madoff. Is that true? That was the VA? That was supposed to be true. That fight is made. It's done. 20 minutes later, he went into the gym and blew his knee out. Who's that? Who's that? Uh, Khabib. Really? Uh, 20 minutes later? 20 fucking <laughs> minutes <laughs> later. So, so he signed, it was all good? Done. Bout agreement's done. Email went out last night from Joe Silva, said this fight is done. Both contracts are signed. Da 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 da. Boom. 20 minutes later, you're not going to fucking believe this. The fight is off. Make another fight. No. He's pretty close, right? We had a fight done. No, I know. If we had another one done, we'd be really good. <laughs> but he's, he's, I mean, he's right there. Yeah, he is right there. Right? Yeah, let's talk about that. I didn't see you guys. How fucking awesome did he look in that fight? Yeah. How about he stopped him twice? He finished Jim Miller, who, by the way, when he stepped into the octagon, looked like he was in the best shape I've ever seen him in. He, was, he looked awesome. Cerrone stopped him twice. Stopped him with the shot to the body. Ref let him recover and get back up and fight again, and then stops him with a head kick. Maybe a Nate Diaz rematch. <laughs> that could be the one. Come on, you guys. Ridiculous. No. I don't know. Call Nate and see what he says. Well, he's, he's get it done, Ariel. Specific. Can, uh, do I have yeah, your yep, yep, yep. Do I get a cut? <laughs> 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 yeah. I'll take it. On the record. Yeah. You, you, th you think that's a, that, that pay-per-view is big enough for you to get a cut? Well, well, it depends on who else, but I do, I maybe disagree with you. Listen, I, I don't like, when I, when I say You said he isn't a needle mover. I think Diaz is a needle I mean, Nate Diaz the, is not a needle mover. I love Nate Diaz. Nate Diaz is actually one of my favorite kids. I, I always got along with Nate. Nate was always great. Lowest rated Fox show ever. What about the tough finale? Any headline that? about it? Lowest rated Fox show ever. His number, he doesn't pull the numbers in. Nick, Nick, Nick. Nick is a needle mover. Nick Nick moves the needle. Which which because he headlined two Fox shows. Yeah. Which one? He doesn't pull good numbers. Both of his fights did not pull good numbers. Listen, if, if if Nate Diaz was the guy, 
we'd, 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 we'd work it out in a minute. You know, if you move the needle, those are the guys that make the big money. You know, he, you realize he's, he's, he's like uh, one in three in his last three fights. He's one in three. Um, you know, he's nowhere near a title fight. He's never won a title. I'm not saying he deserves a title fight. Just, you know, yeah. and, and, and he doesn't move the needle. It seems like he's very popular. That's why people keep... Seems like it's popular when you're looking on fucking Twitter and, and some websites. But the numbers, the real numbers, tell the truth. We know who moves needles and who doesn't move needles. If Nate Diaz was a massive needle mover, he was just asking me, how about Lorenzo getting... You know, we'd, we'd have called him. He'd be on the phone, we'd be figuring it out, we'd work it out. He doesn't move the needle. I'm just going off his last fight, which was on Fox Sports 1, not Fox. And that did over a million views. Go off both the fights. He, he just, doesn't move the needle. If he was, we'd, we'd figure this thing out. He's got a contract that he just signed. You know, he, he's not in the, you know, I know he trains with Melendez, but Melendez is one of the top guys in the world. He's the number one ranked guy in the world, uh, ne next in line for a title shot. He's a former world champion. Nate has absolutely none of those, uh, you know, nothing like that on his resume. And he's one in three Dana, in Dana. his last few fights. Sorry, Dan, in the UFC, you were involved in a lot of work to lobby for the legalization of MMA in New York. Have there been any lobbying efforts in Europe or countries such as France and Norway uh, to break into those markets? The job he is doing in France and all these other countries is unbelievable. What this guy's done and his press conference that he was having today, I, I just remember what it was, um, is huge too. I'm telling you, in the show, how long have you been here now? 18 months. 18 months. What this guy has done in 18 months, we couldn't do in 13 fucking years. We tried, believe me, we tried hard. One other, Danny, you mentioned country, one other country that was discussed recently was Finland. I don't know if it was that potentially in the plans for this year, the Helsinki show. Yeah, we had some discussions in Helsinki, and again, they, uh, you know, the city now end up putting a bid, bid process. We go into a bid process, so the city has come to us with uh, what they propose, and uh, we like it. We like everything about it. We've got the things that we didn't like. And So you've now got a situation where they're coming to you with bids and you say yes, no. Yeah, including the city, so the mayor and the council. Uh, the economic impact <coughs> on the public this weekend is huge. Think about the restaurants, think about the bars, think about the hotels, think about the airline flights. The, that's how you build that. You know, that's how you build it. That's we're in the bid process. People are, the people want. There's only going to be so many yeah. you can have in any given year. There's a lot more cities than there are events. Well, there's three restaurants that do um, impact here. Yeah. Gary, you mentioned um, on Wednesday that there was going to be five EMA uh, events this year. There should be two more left after this, Turkey and Sweden. Does that mean one of them's off? We actually said we were going to do six. Uh, we've got one more to come in the fourth quarter. The other one was uh, in Turkey, in Istanbul, if you remember. Yeah. And uh, there was some political unrest down there that left us a little bit nervous, so we just that decided we didn't need to, to go in there. But we're going to postpone that and maybe go back to that market. That's still a big market, but we have to, we have to be careful. Um, will that date be replaced with another European city this year? Yes, it will. Any Dublin? Sorry? <laughs> Dublin? <laughs> you know, it's funny. All the interviews I did today, they're like, when are you coming back to Dublin? I love that question. I haven't even fucking left yet. The fight's tomorrow. <laughs> and Danny, you said to me in Berlin that I had Fox Sports were, were possibly in a, they were interested in taking this fight. Uh, obviously, Colin Miller dropped out since then. Um, does that have anything to do with them not taking it up? Yeah. The, so they want all these fights. But do you want this, obviously, on five parts? Obviously, you've added a date. So what happened, just, just so you know, we, we went in and we offered Fox Sports these fights that we're yeah. doing in Europe and everything else, and they took a pass on it. So then we started Fight Pass, and now they wish they didn't take a pass on and it. And as well, how much, obviously, you've added a date to Body Champs and Shannon and that. Um, have the subscriptions gone up since then? Uh, how much of an impact has that made on Fight Pass? Has Invicta? Yeah. Uh, no, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if they've gone up. But we, what happens is, we sign Invicta, but when the fight happens, people that want to see the fight, you know, you, like I said, you're going to have these people. Fight Pass keeps getting better and better. Yeah. Tons of good feedback about it and, and everything now, and you're going to have the people. We're going to pay the ten bucks a month that have to get all the content and do whatever they want to do, and then you're going to have people that will jump in for that month for that fight. And then they'll jump in another month for another fight. And now we're starting to offer 
year memberships and all these other things. So it's, it, you're going to have all types of different people that, that, that purchase it in different ways. Do you have an update on Stefan's security? Um, yeah, Stefan. Stefan's okay as far as I know. Everything's good, and you know, he 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 wants to fight, you know, and he wants to sit down and talk. And are you interested in that? Yeah, I, I love Stefan. I love the kid. Would he have to go through a serious amount of tests? It's not. He already did. He's been cleared to fight. It wasn't his physical. It was his mental that night. I think, you know, he started the black. It's just. He's, he's, you know, he had this issue, and, and I'm sure he's nervous about his, you know, his health. So we'll see if he, he can't do that again. That can't happen again. Um, so you recently signed uh, Holly Holm, and uh, that excited a lot of people. But at one point, it seemed like the deal wasn't going to get done. So how did you get it done? Lorenzo did it. <laughs> <laughs> was it did she get uh, a better deal than some of the other bantamweights? Because it seemed like money was an issue for a while. Uh, no, I wouldn't say she got a better deal than, than anybody. You know, the market there is what it is. You get your, you get, a, you get, a, you get a huge lottery ticket if you get to fight with Ronda Rousey. You know, that's your lottery ticket. And you get that fight as well. I, mean, I know she's healing up right now, but would, is is there a plan to bring her right into a title shot as well? Or do you think she would have to no, fight? She, yeah, she'll fight. She, she's she's in the UFC. She'll fight. You know, some of the girls <coughs> work her way up to Ronda maybe. We yeah. haven't talked to you since uh, 176 was canceled. Why you decided to make that, that move? Yeah, um, yeah. I, we lost the main event, and uh, you know we started working on putting together different fights and trying to keep the thing together, and it, it just made more sense to, to cancel it. For us, it's just you know for, for the viewer, for the fans. We didn't like cancel it. We postponed it. We wants to fight Vitor Belfort. And the other is, li is licensing for any update in the bar. Uh, we we want to make that fight happen. That's the next fight. That fight should already happen, you know, before the Machida fight. Um, that's the fight we want to do, and that's the fight that Chris Weidman wants. I love this kid calling out Vitor and, like, you know, he's awesome. Do you still think Vitor deserves it after, you know, being on the, the sidelines for so long? Just he wants to fight. The champ wants to fight Vitor Belfort, man. I don't blame him. I would, too. Does Maybe. that fight have to take place in Nevada? No. No, it doesn't have to take place in Nevada. But he would have to that fight would be big in Brazil, too. You would do that in Brazil? I would do it in Brazil. <coughs> as long as the commission clears him. Yeah. So, you, so you'd have to go through. Mm. Nevada would have to give him the okay, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'd want the okay from Nevada. And if Nevada was cool with it, I'd do it in Brazil. But for Chris, I mean, it seems like as, as the champion to go to Brazil, it's not the best deal, right? Yeah. I mean, where are we going to go? New York? No, but you could <laughs> go to Nevada. Yeah, we could do Nevada, you know? But I'm saying, you asked me. I said I'd do the fight in Brazil. You know how big that fight would be in Brazil? Yeah. Huge. You probably said I'd throw a card there as well. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you said I'd throw a card if you wanted to hear it from other Yeah. That fight would be big in Brazil. That would be a big stadium we'd sell out there and be a big fight. Dana, are you optimistic that if you've got Gina to meet you next week beside Holly, that within a couple of months you could have Cyborg as well, so you have all of them fighting in line? I'm not ready for Cyborg. No? No. Just the I'm not one. ready for the shit I'm going to hear from you fucking guys for Cyborg. <laughs> This whole I told you this whole script will flip when I sign her. As soon as I, the day I fucking sign Cyborg, all you're going to be talking to me about is drug testing, drug, drugs, drug, drug, drugs. Dana, given the fact that funny game you guys play but with but me. Given the fact that the UFC self-regulates events outside of the United States, does that give you any leeway? Certain states. I mean, certain. Well, uh, in Europe and things like that, right? Huh? You have self-regulated Europe. You have followed what the commission in the US do. Right. Does that give you any leeway to try an alternative judging methods or alternative? An alternative to doing what? An alternative judging methods, because I know it's, you're quite happy, unhappy with the judging in the states. No. So what we do is when we leave, when we leave in the places that we do self-regulate, we follow the exact guidelines of the Nevada state. But in theory, you'd be able to change it if you wanted to. Yeah, but I would. You're right. You know, unless Nevada did. What was your uh, initial reaction when you heard Fargo Tina had uh, tested positive for EPO? Yeah, it just sucked. Sucks. Do you, do you think the ban justifies the crime one year ban or do you think it's more severe? Yeah, whatever whatever they say is is what it is. So would that apply to markets like you were saying? Oh um, yeah. So you just oh yeah. The same punishment would apply. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I know you said that <coughs> randomly drug uh, blood testing your entire roster would cost you way too much money. It's millions of dollars. Yeah. 
do you think that maybe you could just start with and what people don't get about that when people ask they're like I saw some stuff on there people on Twitter going how gonna be millions of dollars that makes just just the flights alone the flights to go back and forth depending on where you got guys fighting if your main event is Brazil you know I'm saying if your main event is Brazilian or and, and the other guy is in Seattle you're fly, you're, these drug guys are flying back and forth nonstop, plus the testing and everything else. It ends up being millions of dollars to. Do you think that perhaps you could just start with championship belts, so that at least um, people that are buying pay per views to watch a championship belt, it, it kind of um, keeps the integrity of the championship belt. And so here, here's what we're probably going to end up doing. We're going we're to allocate a number. It's going to be a number that we're going to spend on drug, or drug testing that year, and it'll be in the hands of the athletic commission for them to decide who gets tested, when they get tested, all that shit. We're, we just put up the money, a certain dollar amount. Then uh, to go back to uh, tomorrow's fight, obviously there's a strong prelim with uh, Conor McGregor coming to the card. Neil Cleary, Paul Pender, and Frank Gilman. Are you expecting a full house uh, for the opening bout? Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> Were you at the weigh-ins today? Yeah, I mean, it's. I think this place is going to be packed for the first fight, and uh, it's going to be rocking all night. I'm just it's such a unique experience to come here. I know a lot of the media guys from the United States wanted to be here this week for this fight, whether their companies paid for it or they didn't. You know, I know some of you guys are out of pocket on your own from from the states to come to come uh, cover this fight. First of all, thank you. Second of all, good decision. <laughs> you know, if you're a fight fan, and this is a this is a fight to see. It was full five years ago when the first fight took yeah? place. I agree. Completely full. It's going to be crazy, man. It's uh, it's such an awesome experience to be a fight fan and, and come to a place like this. It's so cool. Hey, Dan, uh, Scotty Nelson wins tomorrow in four now in the UFC. Do you <coughs> think he could be the next poster boy for a uh, European card? Poster? No doubt about it. I mean, people people love Gunnar Nelson, too. It's so funny how you get two sides of, of the one extreme. You got a Conor McGregor who's just off the charts, you know, crazy. And then you got Gunnar Nelson who doesn't say shit, you know, even in his interviews, so they're like two or three words, people are just crazy about the kid, you know, even today you got a standing ovation here, is he Irish? <laughs> he's, he's, he's not, right? He's he's from Iceland. Iceland. Yeah, he's from Iceland, like he was born in Iceland. Yeah, okay. yeah but he trains with Connor. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, they love him here, too. He says he wants to fight uh, Yori, and Yori uh, you know, doesn't have to fight. Missing Who does, Connor? Yeah. Hmm. That seems a little quick to me, too, to jump right up to a kid like Rory. But who knows? It's, he's taking kind of a slow approach. I mean, he's fought a lot. He's, people think that he's ready for a top ten, maybe even top five. What people? <laughs> the people. The people? <laughs> yeah. The ones on Twitter that you love. Those people? <laughs> yeah. Because you sometimes... Those, those are the same people that when I put that Sakuraba video up were saying, get Sakuraba a fight. <laughs> <laughs> Did you not understand the fucking premise of that video and what was being said in that video? I thought you don't pay attention to the internet. I don't. But I told you I put that up. Yeah. And I, you what do you think? I didn't, I didn't read it? Don't read it, yeah. Of course I read it. Why not? Hmm. Just ignore them. Just yeah. post it and walk away. Huh? Get it that way. You're a dick. <laughs> <laughs> You're a dick. No, that's the best way to do it. Oh. Don't listen to the people. Right. Well, how pleased are you that you know you, you, you rewarded Ross Pearson for the, the victory that he got a loss in, and he's back really quickly now. He's stepping against Abel Quintero, no? Um, he won that fight. fight. He yeah. won that fight. You don't have to be English, no. He won that fight. He won that fight. But you, but you're pleased he stepped back in so quickly. When you but that's the type of kid he is. is. That's the type of kid he is. He, he's that guy. Good fight, Trujillo. Yeah, it's a great fight. That's a great fight. Huh. Who? Yeah. He's here, isn't he? Yeah. yeah he's here. Yeah. I, I, I'm sure we're gonna. What happened? Wasn't he injured? I think he was injured. Am I wrong? Manuel was injured, wasn't he? Didn't he get hurt in that fight? He did some time off. He traveled and just. He thought he hurt his ribs or hurt something in that fight. Ribs. Yeah. So I think he was hurt. So when he's ready to go, we're ready to go. Maybe we got plenty of fights to put him on. Show him. Yeah, yeah. We could, wherever, wherever we end up, he could go anywhere, not just the UK. Him and Shogun. Good guy. In Dublin. I love when you guys <laughs> match make. <laughs> I love when you guys match make. Dana, did you, did Dana? Yo. Did you see uh, that Floyd had, um, in the press? He said he wasn't aware of Ronda, and then he's come out and apologized. 
Oh, he did? He, yeah, he's he apologized? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And he when? congratulated on uh, Yesterday. Yeah. Yesterday? Yeah. Yesterday? Yeah. That's you, cool of him. Do you think that kind of highlights uh, Floyd's um, sort of lack of interest in MMA, or do you think he's genuinely intimidated by any well, fellow combat sports? <clears throat> no, I, I think that, you know, it definitely sucks when you're Floyd, you know, and you're, you're unbeaten 17 years and everything else, and people are debating whether this chick could beat you up or not. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't think yeah. that's fun for him, but, uh, you know, if, if, if Floyd really understood MMA and how it works and her level of judo and everything else, um, it's still a, it's, it's a hard thing for guys to wrap their brain around that a woman could do that to you. Um, but it's cool that he came out and said, you know, it's cool that he did. And, of course, what, <laughs> and what he said was, I never heard of him. You know, so that was kind of his dig at her. Do you believe him? Do, her. Him do you believe him? No. Me neither. <laughs> you know. It's a difficult position for Floyd. Everybody's been saying it for so long. You know, he, he knows, but. Like if Floyd turns around and says, you know, someone says to Floyd, I think Ronda Rousey beat you. He can't turn around and say, I would knock that woman out because right. imagine the headlines. <laughs> the next That's day. what I said. It's a no win situation. Yeah. It's, you know, you'd be like, I'd, I'd kick her ass, you know, yeah. and you're talking about beating up a woman, and it's a no, <laughs> it's a no win situation for Floyd. After Rousey's last uh, performance, winning in 16 seconds, there's been a lot of comparisons of, of her and Tyson in his A day where perhaps people are tuning in just to, they don't care if it's a, a five round war, you know, they're expecting maybe a quick True. finish. Is that a fair comparison? No doubt about it. You know, you have to you have to wonder how fast is this going to be. Her last performance was unbelievable. You know, and the thing that's scary scary about Ronda is, you know, you knew where her judo was anyway. Now her hands are getting really good. Like she's her hands are legit now. And uh, she was telling me during that fight, she said that she said when I hit her, I knocked her out with the shot, and then I like ca sort of caught her under her arms, hit her with a knee, and then threw her. And she said her body was just like a rag doll. You know, when she went. And she said it all happened so fast. What's crazy about the Ronda fight, 16 seconds, but what happened in that 16 seconds was unbelievable. How did her <clears> knee surgery? Huh? How did her knee surgery? It, it went great. She, yep. she, she didn't have surgery. Like a scope, she just right? had a scope, yeah. She's fine. Do you ever get worried that Ronda will clean out the division and there's no one there for her to fight? Well, she's got some fights set up for a while, so. She's taking care of them. Yeah, really she really is. I don't worry about that kind of stuff, though. It's whatever happens. Out. People ask me, do you worry Hollywood's going to take her? Do you worry that this and that? You know, If Hollywood takes Ronda Rousey and she becomes a huge star, is that, how is that bad for us? You know, And she's, she's the woman who launched this, this, this division and, and women's fighting in the UFC. Dana, uh, can I just ask, um, obviously we've seen how Conor McGregor and Michael Bisping have uh, been very positive always for European MMA. Do you feel it's important that there's a female European fighter? I know there's two inside the uh, Ultimate Fighter house at, at the minute. Do you think it's important that European have a female face in MMA as well? It's definitely not a bad thing. Yeah, I, I think it's great. And uh, and you're right. <clears throat> there's two in there right now. Um, one of them has fought already. And uh, and we'll see how it goes. He's going to be waiting a while. <laughs> have you talked to BJ Penn? I have not talked to BJ. Talk to his brother. Oh, okay. BJ, BJ, this is BJ, man. This is how awesome BJ is. So BJ had his family out there. I think his wife and kids, you know. And uh, they're heading to the airport to go back to Hawaii. He stops at an RV place, gets an RV, and decides to travel around the United States instead of go home. <laughs> on his way to the airport. So he's traveling around the Find United States right now with his wife and kids. Traveling around the United States in an RV. But do you know, has anyone talked to him, like, do you know how he's handling the end of his career? Mm -hmm. No. No. Leaving him alone? Yeah. Dana, um, Cage Warriors announced a few, a few weeks ago that they're going to have British and Irish um, Four Nations Championship um, belts or championships outside <coughs> their world championships. What's your A thought on that? And B, would you maybe consider doing that for UFC having um, continental European champions? Yeah. Nah. We've talked about that, and I know I know he likes it. <laughs> he likes it. I don't like it. Um, I, like, I like world champions. I like 
I like uh, once you once you start getting too many champions, man, it turns into boxing and you just don't know who's who anymore. Mm. That that's my take on it, but he's gonna keep battling for it. He loves it. European champion is quite a distinct thing, though. It's not like a you know small minor boxing title. I agree. Like. It's true. The Europeans will go for it, I think. Dana, speaking of titles, obviously I've mentioned to you that he was in Berlin about a European title fight. Um, Rob Pickett, if he was to win on Saturday, um, obviously he'd be a big star, number one contendership against DJ. He's fought him before, he's beaten him before. Could that be a potential European title fight if Rob was to get a win uh, on Saturday night? Yeah, that's not a bad idea. We're going to go with that. <laughs> you can take full credit for that. Is that set in stone if he wins as the number one contender? I, I like it. Let's see what happens. Where Where to put McCall away to do it? It can't be the same fight as in Syria and London. What's that? I'll have to sorry, I'll speak. Okay. Um, will it be, we'll have to put him away? Or he, he, it can't be the same as London. He can't go three rounds like he did with Neil Siri. So we have to put it, put it, Ian McCall it, away. It definitely it. doesn't hurt when you do that, you know? But, but Ian's a tough one. Actually, he looked like Ian's bigger brother. <laughs> <laughs> Without the twist on the mustache. <laughs> um... Ian's a tough guy to do that to, so if he did, that'd be very impressive. But that's a fight that would definitely sell. No, I love in, it. In, in I, I love that fight. Would you go as a main event to pay per view? I don't know. Listen, I don't make fights right here, right now. <laughs> you got a great idea. Let's see what happens. Okay, I good. like it. Fair enough. This Jean Carano fight with Ronda, she gets the immediate shot. Like, is she getting that just because she's a big name? She's not had a fight since 2009. Here's the thing with that. Yeah. I'm going to get. You're going to bring me into the cyborg water again, but, you know. She did a damn good job against Cyborg, and Cyborg, Cyborg was a little jacked up on Mountain Dew in that fight, you know what five I mean? Years. Huh? It was five years yeah. ago. Yeah, at 145. And she's the one that started this whole, uh, you know, women's MMA craze, and, and Ronda, Ronda wants to fight her. Ronda has done everything that we have asked her to do. You know, this is like a GSP situation when GSP asked us for Diaz. You know, how would I say no to, to, to GSP? Ronda wants this fight bad. But is Gina getting off with Gina Ronda or nothing? G Gina wants to fight bad, too. She doesn't want a tune-up fight. You're confident she can make 135? She is. She have, is. You, has she have you spoken to her about keeping training over this period? She said she's been training D day since, day. She, since she left MMA. Stop, no. Yeah, she's obviously not training like she trained for, you know, for fights, but she's been training. You, you've been a couple of feet from her. How does she look? She looks great. Be better than, than looking great. Wait till you hear her talk and what she says and what she has to say about all this. It's pretty see awesome. It's uh, competitive, given how Ronda's been going through everybody else. See, Gina is competitive. We'll see. Is you she, um, she going to be any less competitive than any of the girls she's fought? You know what I mean? The last fight, look at Alexis Davis. Alexis Davis is awesome. 16 seconds. You think, you think Carano's going to be less competitive than that? Six seconds? I think, uh, I think, I mean, right? I think Alexis looked a bit maybe too How about, What was the fight before that with uh, McMahon? McMahon. Yeah, a How much? Like a, minute. a minute. You think Gina's going to be less competitive than a minute or 16 seconds? This is kind of where we are with Ronda now. We've been calculating her fights by how long the opponents are going to last. It's, it's a little bit like Vanderlei in fights. You've got yeah. like Ronda. Like Tyson. When you spoke to Gina about Ronda, does she see her as quite an experienced so that's where she sees her. Yes. Does she talk about she, 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 she loves her, and she says she's the reason she really got into it, and she respects her a lot. And she says, uh, Rhonda thinks that, that Gina's better than people think she is. And what does Gina say to you about Rhonda? She well? loves Rhonda, <laughs> and, uh, and, and she respects her, and you know they both have a lot of respect for each other. It's kind of interesting, though, from Rhonda's perspective. Like, I love this girl so much, I want to beat her ass. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pretty. True. <laughs> Rhonda is, is a different different animal, man. She's fa she's fucking fascinating. She's the greatest athlete I've ever worked with, on every level. I mean, she's just, you know, everybody t talks about how I'm I'm always, you know, Rhonda this and Rhonda that. It's hard not to Rhonda this and Rhonda that when you deal with her, and then you look at her, you know, you, and you you know something, <clears throat> with this whole Hollywood thing that's happening to her, the amount of sponsors she has, the success she's had, the fame. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. She could be one of these chicks that could just keep um, world-class judo. She could keep throwing girls down and trying to armbar them all day long. They're bringing in like Mexican world champion boxers. She's in there 
going toe to toe with these girls all the time. They send me all the sparring footage. You should see this shit, what she's doing to these girls. No, she's working harder. She's trying to get her hands better. She, she's just, I've never seen anything like it. We fly her every, I mean, look at the, the attention she gets. We have her doing all this crazy shit. She's going to China with me in like a couple weeks or whenever the hell that's, that is. She just had knee surgery and uh, hand, she got her hand casted. She's going to China with me. She's got to go down to Brazil and do a bunch of stuff in Brazil. The girl never stops. You know, she's got to promote all her movies and do all that stuff. It's, it's unbelievable. So you don't see how any about this? How about, how about she got an SB? She opted to get her surgeries instead to get them done and get healed faster instead of showing up and doing the whole SB thing. You know what I mean? It's a huge deal. Every, every big star in, in all of sports is there. This girl went and got both her surgeries done so that she could heal faster and get back in there and perform again. She, she, I've never dealt with anybody like her. Did you see Rousey and Karan who was that end of year show? Perhaps? There's, there's a new December. Yeah, the end of year. It won't be the end of the year, but it'll probably be early December. Is she one of those that understands the window? Like she has a small window to make as much money as she can. And Nobody gets it more than she does. Mm -hmm. And believe me when I tell you, she's making a lot of money. Do you never worry though? You might hit peak run, but you know, because a lot of the MMA pages like run, 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 run. Yeah, it drives us crazy because there was this thing that came out about all the female athletes and who's the highest paid female athlete. Mm. It's Ronda, but. I think she's the biggest female sports star in the world, even in any sport right now, potentially. I don't know. Um, We've been talking about it with a few people. Yeah, the, the SB, the SB thing didn't hurt. You know, I think that thing. 2.2 .2 million people were watching the SBs, and to see Ronda win, which basically, like I said, for the Oscars is best actress, and the male gets best actor. You know what I mean? That's basically what that was for the SBs. Her and Kevin Durant. So it's it's a big deal. A lot of a lot more people are aware of Rhonda after that if they weren't before that. What does it do for your company if she <coughs> wins then as well? If she's won then? It's, uh, <clears throat> you know, it's good to finally see our athletes recognized by, by somebody like, and, and when you think about, if you think about since we've done this Fox deal in the United States, it could be a situation where ESPN shuns us even more, but it seemed like since we've done the deal with Fox, it's given us the credibility where ESPN is actually really showing us the respect and our athletes the respect that, that they deserve, and it's awesome to see ESPN doing that. What's the criteria from Gina's side to sign the deal then? The criteria? Yeah, is there certain stipulations? That yeah, th I mean, I think the criteria is us sitting in a room together with a lawyer. You know, I can't wait to meet this guy. Face to face. Do you foresee problems? You're, you're quite confident. No, it's definitely not going to be. It's not going to be, you know, it's going to be a typical Monday. <laughs> Shitty day. You'll get it done, though. Yeah. You're kind of giving us some leverage, though. If you've already promised the title shot and the big payday, you know, then you're going to go and do the deal. And she knows you want to make that fight. She can sit back and go, ah, I'll stick another zero. Yeah. Probably. So she can have another we'll zero in the end. We'll either say no to that zero or yes to that zero. Yeah. Uh, Gary mentioned on Wednesday. I'm not when we when we go into deals and do stuff. It's not like we're, we're, we're we go into a deal and we're like, you know, me and Lorenzo are like, all right, let's let's uh, let's work this thing in there and let's 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 screw this girl out of money she deserves or screw this guy out of money they deserve. If you're a needle mover and you do something, you're gonna get paid. Yeah. You know, you, you you get paid. We don't go in there and, and and bullshit and try to whatever. We go in there to get a deal done and be fair and. And do what's right. And you would anticipate the needle you know, moving for that fight. Look at look at how much I've said. You know, I I haven't made it like nah. We can live her. The UFC will live without Gina Carano. We don't need Gina Carano. When realistically, a lot of you are bitching like you think Gina Carano deserves this. You think she's gonna pet him? Do you think she's this? Do you think she's that? I'm actually the one saying yes. Like I'm her fucking agent and I'm trying to do the deal with the UFC. You know, but that's that's not really how we play. I think that Gina is important. I think that it is a big fight. It's a fight that Ronda Rousey wants. You know, and uh, Rhonda's been very good to us, man, and if that's what she wants, then I'm going to try to get it done. <clears throat> Danny, Gary mentioned on Wednesday about possible uh, European edition of the Ultimate Fighter. How does that sound to you, and would you like to see a first round like Conor McGregor uh, 
uh, as one of the coaches or is it immaterial who the coaches are? Uh, you feel it's going to grow the sport in this region? Yeah, I think Connor's got some work to do before he's the coach of the ultimate fighter. You know, he's he's just getting, he's not even in the top 10 yet. Um, but I love, I love, I, I told you I want ultimate fighter everywhere. So European ultimate fighter would be amazing.